Hey Spartans, how you doing and welcome back to another video and today it's slightly different from the norm because I had to talk about this, I had to share this exciting news with you because, well, for the last couple of years I must have been living under a cardboard box because I had no clue that this was even a thing. So basically, the Lord of the Rings, the battle for Middle Earth, the classic 2004 real-time strategy title is Aragon. It has been remade. Yes, that is right. It's having a full-blown remake. It is being remade. And boy, oh boy, am I excited about this because they released a video last week of about 18 minutes of gameplay, the first real gameplay glimpse we've seen of the game so far. And okay, there's not much to see yet. But still, it looks absolutely fantastic. The expectation levels are pretty high. It looks extremely promising. So today, I'm going to quickly talk to you about it because you never know. You could have been alongside me in the same cardboard box for the last two years and also do not have a clue that this is even a thing. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about it today. Spread the news about the, the game or the, the remake of it and to tell you basically what to expect from it, the features and mechanics that we know so far, and also links to where you can go to to find out more information about the game from the actual developers themselves, things like Discord, etc. So yeah, I'll talk to you about them in a little bit. So arguably, back in the day, the Battle of Middle Earth game was one of the best RTS games out there. And it was, you know, really well received. I had a great time playing it back in 2004. At that point, Electronic Arts held the rights to make the game, obviously based on the movies by Peter Jackson. Eventually, the license then was sort of moved over to Warner Brothers in 2008, leaving the sort of games behind in a, in a way, the Battle for Middle Earth 1 and Battle for Middle Earth 2, and it sort of made it extremely difficult to get the original games working uh, on obviously modern computers because obviously the, the physical copies were out there, they weren't working with the most up-to-date operating systems and obviously there was no real support for the game going forward. So to see this project in action, to bring it back to life is so good, I cannot tell you. So basically we've seen that the fact is that this isn't being done by a company, this is being done by effectively die-hard fans of the game who love the series, who love Lord of the Rings and just want to get the game back up and running. And so with that being the case, that actually makes it even more fascinating because yes, a company would get hold of it, they wouldn't do maybe certain things that the fans would love, they wouldn't keep it as true to its original form. But if fans, modders, and you know people who have got such passion behind them to make the project the best that they can, they're going to pour more love into it, more attention into it than possibly a company would if they got hold of it. So that's why it makes it even more special for me. So it's first announced that this was being worked on back in 2018. And since then, they've been releasing certain sort of small clips and trailers talking about specific mechanics and information that we are to expect in the game and as I say the social media pages which I'll link to will show you links as well to those videos you can watch but last week was the first time we actually got to see the real gameplay of it in action. Now in terms of the features that have been sort of told to us so far there's quite a few and it looks really promising so firstly we've got an entire new game engine so a new engine allows the support of up-to-date technology and compatibility with newer systems which of course the old 2004 game wouldn't and you've got new photo realistic graphics and improved game mechanics and much more it says. So they're going to be making the models about 10 times more detailed than the models in the original game. And as you can see here, the Orikai are looking absolutely superb, so detailed in their appearance. So they're going to be making the maps incredibly more detailed with smoothly billowing trees, grass, flying birds and wandering wild animals. So they're trying to really bring the Middle Earth or the world of Middle Earth to life even more so. Really make it as immersive as possible with the, the maps that you can play on. So they have mentioned that there's going to be possibly new units, buildings and abilities, but they want to preserve, of course, what is in the original game. And that's their primary goal. 
yet they want to um, you know change certain things and add new elements to give it a bit of a lease of life in the update but not as I say to make it too different from the original so they're also promising a bigger multiplayer as true fans of online mode we will do our best to minimize lags and bugs and they're in touch with pro players of Battle for Middle Earth and we can't wait to create and see the auto rating systems exciting team matches and tournaments so yet yeah, the potential for this to be propelled forward in the multiplayer sort of spectrum is very exciting as well a big one for me is the 4k resolution support which apparently is being looked at here you know that is going to be incredible really making this a 4k game is a massive task but if it's something they can do extremely exciting it says here we struggled much more with setting up the camera and resolution in game because of the original battle for middle earth was made for obviously older monitors but now we can forget about that because the reforged version will be compatible with the newest screen so if 4k is available how beautiful will that look and so alongside the resolution upgrade we've got new shaders so thanks to new shaders objects in game acquire physically correct lighting and shadowing Alvin armor and blades get shiny under a bright sun. Orc inferior and dirty weaponry and armor are dim under the same circumstances. So that, that little touch of detail could possibly make even more of a difference. New global campaign map. Ooh, this, sounds, this sounds good one. So currently we're engaging in creating the multiplayer. Yet we understand that many feel nostalgic about the campaign of Battle for Middle Earth. And that they would love to see something similar on the up-to-date engine. Not everyone is a fan of ruthless multiplayer mode and that is why we hope to create stunning locations of Middle Earth and the campaign. In it you'll be able to play as your favorite heroes, enjoy the views of fortresses and picturesque landscapes without any haste or pressure. There's going to be a new upgrade system as well. I mean these are, these are some fantastic features here. New upgrade system. We're aiming at preserving the special elegant style of Lord of the Rings and that's why we want to avoid making cartoonish stylized glowing blades of common Gondor soldiers and orcs. The only exception being the Alvin enchanted weapons. To fill in the void we are preparing different and interesting upgrades. So maybe as you progress through the sort of storyline, as you progress through the single player, those upgrade systems will really take effect and you'll start to see that come into fruition a lot more as you play. And one of the things they're very proud of is the fact, obviously in the old 2004 game, you can imagine the FPS would have been quite low. It wouldn't have supported anything high, so it was capped at kind of 30 FPS. No problem now, that's going to go way beyond 30, 60. I don't even, I don't even go beyond 60, but definitely a starting block. Um, you know, it would make it obviously a lot smoother and a much nicer performance for you to enjoy at a higher FPS. And they're completely redoing the special effects, so they're remaking all effects from the ground up. And thanks to the new engine, they will seemingly interact with the environment and look even more realistic. So that's what we know so far from the features from the website. As I say, I'll link it down below in the description for you to check out. But, you know... Little details like this really do make it special for me. And seeing what we've already been shown in the gameplay trailer for now, yes, it may not seem much movement slightly off and it's 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 quite bare bones in some ways already. But the progress that has been made is astounding. And I only can imagine what will happen as time goes on. And now that they've released this first gameplay trailer, they have promised to release more throughout the next few months. Now there is talk of an early access beta that could be coming out maybe later on this year. I believe it's going to contain two factions. Now according to the website, if it's like what we've seen so far, obviously I would imagine one of them will be Isengard considering we're seeing a lot of the Isengard troops here. And maybe the other units will, or the faction will be Elves or maybe Mordor from what I've seen on the website so far. But even if we can just play with two or three factions, it's a great starting block and it will give us a taste, of course, when the full game is released. And actually, we even got a sneak peek of Grima Wormtongue in the uh, video and as well some cave trolls. We know what Sean Bean thinks about cave trolls, don't we? They have a cave troll. So in terms of where you can go and get more information about this and even sign up and help support them even further and get yourself your own voice heard within the community, 
is basically you've got their YouTube channel. As I say, all these will be linked below in the description. You've got the website, which you can go to. You've also got their Discord service. If you want to do join Discord and chat in there amongst other fans, then you can do so. And as well, you've got their actual forums, which you can go to and speak more about the game. And I would imagine once the early access is released, you'll be able to then give feedback about that beta version direct into the forum for the developers to look at. Now, I believe as well that the developers are obviously working this on a, working on this on a daily basis, but some are kind of treating this as a full-time job. Now, financing, I'm not sure how that's working. I do know you can donate to the project. So if you do want to donate, there is a link, I believe, on the uh, website yeah i'm just looking at the website now you can go onto the website and donate in a number of currencies over there so if you do want to support them that way then by all means you can financially so it must be that something is obviously keeping them going in that sort of regard behind the scenes but what i love is the fact that they're dedicated to this they're not just trying to do it once a week or on and off when they can it looks like they're taking this very seriously and they are doing it pretty much as i say some people on a full-time basis. I suppose the key takeaway from all this is that what we have here isn't a sort of a rough attempt by a group of fans to revive the game, but this is a complete remake in Unreal Engine 4 with all the graphical upgrades and gameplay improvements that entails. So it's not just a, a stab at the dark to try and make this a possibility again. It's a proper serious go at getting this game back to 2020 levels of gameplay. So one of the big issues for me, or concerns more so at the beginning, was licensing. It's always been an issue, especially with Lord of the Rings. The IP is very well protected, so anyone to make anything related to it, you're always going to be in for trouble, really. But this is being developed as a non-commercial project, which of course will then help completely avoid any licensing nightmares that are out there, because they are obviously um, not trying to sell the game, so there's no financial profit being made off it, so nothing can really go wrong in that regard. And obviously, let's not get carried away, you know, this is still, as I say, a fan-led project, so things come along, we never know what's around the corner, so we aren't absolutely guaranteed that this will come to full completion. Obviously, we hope it does, but you never know. Anything like this is always uncertain, so we take it of course, one step at a time, but obviously the best way to keep on track with the progress is to join the different media websites that you can. You know, I absolutely love this game. I love the setting, of course, of Middle Earth and Lord of the Rings. It's phenomenal. And the fact that, you know, a group of people are just trying to make this game ultimately playable again in the modern age is superb to see. We've all seen it before. I mean, look at the game. The fantastic. I had so much fun with this one. The Return of the King, the sort of action hack and slash game that was produced by EA. To some people now, that's not playable anymore. If you've got the CD version, I don't think it works. It sort of freezes and you can't progress. Yeah, I think some people are just locked to playing as Samwise Gamgee. And there's no way of getting it working on Windows 10 machines anymore. So, you know, that classic game could be and probably most likely will be lost to the midst of time but if you actually check out the trailer on their youtube channel you will see that the video has been incredibly well received so far and why not people who played the game when it first came out will no doubt have strong feelings about battle for middle earth along with games such as you know the return of the king and other titles like total war third age the great mod for medieval 2 but it's reassuring to see how well it's going and obviously the potential for it is incredible and the fact that if this does come out not only will it attract the players who used to play it back in the day but also now the potential for new players to come in who've never played battle for middle earth before getting their hands on it for the first time incredible so that's pretty much it. There's nothing more really to say in this video. The main reason for it was obviously to make sure you guys were aware of this, to get word out there that this is in existence. But the gameplay there was just great. It gave us that glimpse of being able to create units, seeing animations in, in action, buildings being placed, managing armies across the battlefield. It looks 
outstanding and the fact that this is just the start of it just makes me can't wait for what's to come so as i say make sure you check out all the social media links and websites down below in the description get yourself signed up to the forums and the discord channel to make sure you are first to know about any updates that are going to happen and of course when the game does come out in early access beta i'll make sure to try and get a copy of it so i can show to you how it works how it looks and sort of the game in action so i hope you enjoyed the video please make sure to drop it a like and of course make sure you let me know down below in the comments your thoughts your opinions about what you've seen so far and what you want to see from any future updates going forward i'd love to hear from you but until next time take care and farewell <laughs>